Number 19. A rotating space station is said to create artificial gravity, a loosely defined term used for an acceleration that would be crudely similar to gravity. The outer wall of the rotating space station would become a floor for the astronauts, and centripetal acceleration supplied by the floor would allow astronauts to exercise and maintain muscle and bone strength more naturally than in non-rotating space environments. If the space station is 200 meters in diameter, what is the angular velo- what excuse me angular velocity would produce an artificial gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared uh, at the rim? So here's our space station, right? It's circular, all right, and it has some um, angular velocity here. We're saying it's rotating, I guess, clockwise, all right. So as um, as the astronaut nears this particular point, right, they have a linear velocity that is pointing, oops, that is pointing straight this way. Okay, don't mind the little bend there. But if you notice, though, the, the path maintain is curved, right? So their actual tra uh, trajectory at this particular point is kind of up to this direction. So there must be some force pointing towards the middle so that their path keeps curving. All right, that is the centripetal force. Okay, so now if the centripetal force points up, well, the centripetal acceleration also points in the same direction, right? So that's what they're talking about. When they're, when they're saying that the centripetal acceleration supplied by the floor would allow the astronauts to kind of exercise and do all that stuff because it keeps them grounded, essentially, on the floor. Now, let's get to uh, solving the problem, all right? Um, so they want us to find angular velocity. So why don't we locate formulas that have angular velocity in them? It's really these two, right? Those are the two main ones. So now, which of the two am I going to use? Well, I'm going to start with... Uh, this guy right here, because I know they gave me a diameter, right? So more than likely, I am probably have to use the radius to in my calculation. So let me start by detailing this formula first. So the linear velocity is equal to the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. I want to solve for the angular velocity, so let me just do so right now. Just divide up both sides by r. What that gives you now is the angular velocity is equal to the tangential or linear velocity divided by the radius. Now, we do know the radius, right? I mean, they gave us the diameter, so obviously we can just divide this by 2, and the radius is then 100. Okay, so I know this. Next question is, do I know the tangential velocity? Uh, no, right? We don't know it. They didn't give it to us. All right, so maybe now i got to figure out another formula that has uh, linear velocity in it and can also then start bringing in some other values into the problem, maybe like this, Right? They told us that this is the artificial gravity, and this is an acceleration. So, hmm, maybe I'll try to incorporate this formula. Now, the only problem with that is that it's not solved for the uh, linear velocity. No big deal, though, right? We know algebra. <clears throat> so, let's simply take that formula and solve it for V. When we do so, cross-multiply these two terms, so that becomes AC times R, right, is equal to V squared, now just take the square root of both sides. So we see that the square root of the, acceler of the centripetal acceleration uh, multiplied by the radius will give me the velocity. So now what we're going to look to do is take this and plug it on in, right? 4v. Oops. And when we do that, yeah, that's fine. And when we do that, right, let's see what happens now. So do we know all of these variables? Do we know the radius? Yeah, it's 100. So that's fine. We know both of those R's. Do I know the centripetal acceleration? Well, they want me to find the angular velocity when the centripetal acceleration is 9.8. So voila, we got what we need. So now just plug it on in, right? So it's 9.80 times 100, all divided by 100. That will equal the angular velocity. And therefore, let's calculate it. So square root of 9.8 times 100 and then divide that by 100. So we get a value of 0 0.313. So 0 0.313, and that would be in radians per second. And that is the final answer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I will help you out with your next problem. Thank you very much.